Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Weston Rodriguez, and I did my research paper on Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, if you aren't familiar with uh, D&D, uh, it's sort of thought of as being the grandfather of all role-playing games. Uh, so terms you may have heard of in other games, like hit points and attack damage, um, all got their start in Dungeons & Dragons, um, and a lot of board games and video games have been hugely influenced by D&D. Uh, so in order to play the game, you need a group of players. Uh, most of them are going to be player characters. A player character, really all they need to get started is a character sheet and some dice. A character sheet kind of represents their character in the world. Um, they could be like a wizard or a fighter or a paladin or a warlock or something like that. Um, and this sheet kind of represents their character's abilities. Um, and then the dice... Uh, are used to create random chance when a player tries to do something in the world. Um, they roll a dice sometimes to see if it's possible, uh, whether they succeed or fail, and the story is not predictable because you don't know which way the dice are going to roll. The Dungeon Master or DM is the player which is responsible for kind of being the narrator and referee. They also have to read a bunch of books, so I had to read all these. Uh, this is like 900 pages of uh, reference material um, that contains like monsters and and um, and techniques for building worlds and spells and all that stuff and helping characters or helping the players create their characters, all that stuff is in there. So I acted as a player participant, the DM for before players. Uh, my research kind of focused on the small group interactions between those players. Um, and I was ultimately, ultimately really surprised how quickly the group bonded over common goals. Um, so group uh, leadership formed and different skill sets presented themselves in the group kind of outside of the game, so kind of metagame stuff, uh, where players uh, were bonding and um, uh, quickly kind of created a common goal for themselves uh, within the nature of the game. And this is all being done as uh, the game's, as the world's being built kind of dynamically. So as the DM, obviously, you know, I'm, I'm not, you know, writing Game of Thrones or Lord of the Rings. Like, I created a loose structure for the world, and the players kind of, navigate that and negotiate that with me um, and some of it's kind of imp improvised and some of it's kind of pre-generated by me um, but whatever the direction goes the players and the DM um, kind of work together in building this world that has rules and, and consequences and, and, and rewards and challenges and stuff and it creates this really unique dynamic between a group. I really enjoyed the process of learning the game and its history. Um, and figuring out the approach that I could take in my own research. I ended up choosing uh, group communication because, uh, between the players because um, Dungeons & Dragons represents some really unique interaction that happens between members of the group um, that don't typically, um, or maybe they do happen, but they're not as prevalent, like the world building that goes on between players and the formation of group and, um, and dynamically creating their own goals. Um, it, it represents a really uh, kind of a unique amalgamation of uh, uh, kind of performance art and um, and communication by the players. So to be honest, I got in a little bit over my head with D and D. Um, I've always wanted to try Dungeons and Dragons, so I thought that a research paper would be a really good opportunity to get in and play it with some people. Um, but in hindsight, it ended up being kind of a lot to to manage. Um, there's a lot of rules, as I kind of showed earlier. Um, had to kind of digest all that content, um, as well as kind of teach it to the other players, and still manage a research paper on top of all of that. Um, so it ended up being pretty challenging time-wise, and I think the only reason I was able to get through it um, was because the content to me was so um, kind of engaging, and uh, and I really liked the topic. It kind of became a hobby as well as a project. Uh, so game research is really like kind of an untapped area of study um, because largely until now a lot of analysis um, with games has not really been analysis, it's more been like in the review sector, um, so reviewing games um, on their on their kind of merits uh, from a sales perspective. Um, but really there's such a huge, you know, vast body of content with games that there's so many areas to explore um, that you can really just run with it because if there's a game you like and um, some some way that people interact with that game or something about the game that really strikes you, um, you know, run with it because there's there's a pretty good chance that not a whole lot of research has been done in that area. 
Uh, in closing, I just wanted to say uh, I've had a really great time in this class. Um, it's been really fun, and I've learned a lot. Um, and I really have loved reading uh, all of your game analysis papers over this course. Um, as for D&D, um, it kind of lives in a very unique area of communication. It's cooperative storytelling and kind of improvisational storytelling. Um, and that sort of dances the line between performance and communication between the players. Uh, it's also a really fun and engaging game, uh, sort of exceeding what video games are capable of doing. Uh, it's sort of, you know, it's kind of cliche, but the only limit is the group's imagination. Um, so I definitely recommend it if you have a chance to check it out, because I had a lot of fun with it. I'll probably be playing it again at some point. Um, all right, so thanks.